Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to do some live niche research using Google's Bard. And if you don't know what a niche is, it's a specialized market or market segment which kind of defines the needs and wants of a small group of consumers. So if I were to start a business of some sort, which can be online or in person, ideally, I should target a specific niche because businesses that target niches are often more successful than businesses which try to appeal to a broad market. Now, there are different kinds of niches such as geographic niches, demographic niches, and psychographic niches. In today's video, I'm going to do some live research on two different kinds of niches one which is based on my interests and another one which is based on what's trending. So make sure to stick around till the end of this video. Now before we get started, there's two things I want to mention. If this is your first time to my channel, I recommend you to join my AI newsletter. I have been working on a few AI workflows that I create for myself, but I have been a bit delayed because there's a lot of AI news coming and I'm just trying to keep up. The second thing that I want to mention here is when you are using BARD, your first instinct might be to compare it with GPT-4, which is a paid product. It's important to remember that before Google search came along, Yahoo search was the primary search engine for quite some time. And when Google got good, Yahoo was basically forgotten. And just like that, Google BARD is just starting out. It's in its early stages and it's also free. So the more people use BARD, it's going to get better and better. And given that it uses the entire Google search engine and Google's database in the backend, I expect it to get much, much better in the future. All right, let's get started. So the first attempt at niche research that I'm going to do is going to be based on my interests. So here's how I'm going to structure my prompt. I'm going to ask Bard, give me 10 niche ideas based on my interests. And I'm going to write a few interests that I'm passionate about or something that I know a lot about. So the first one is yoga and meditation, which I do regularly. I have a background in Latin dance and I have been a software engineer for over 10 years. I have done some event management personally as well. And lately I have been enjoying YouTube content creation. So these are things that I'm interested in. What I don't know is if there is something in the intersection of these interests that can be useful to build an online business. And like some AIR tools, I'm also going to use some prompt exclusions or negative prompts. So I'm going to say avoid these topics. So usually what happens is if you are not a medical professional or you're not certified to give nutrition advice or you're not a certified financial advisor, it's not recommended to create content in these categories because there's a chance that those websites might not do good on search engine optimization when they find out that you are not certified to give advice or create content with those. So I have no background in the medical or financial field, so I'm going to avoid these topics. And I would also recommend you to do the same and avoid topics which involves human health or money. All right, I think I have a decent prompt to start out. I'm going to go and hit return. All right, it gave me 10 niche ideas based on my interests in an interesting format. I have the first five of them with additional details and the second five without much details. So the second draft has all of the topics without any details. And the third draft seems to have mentioned the same things in a different order. All right, the first one says online yoga and meditation classes for busy professionals. This is a great niche for people who want to learn yoga, don't have time to go for a class in person. You could offer live or pre-recorded classes. Next one is Latin dance lesson for beginners. This is a great niche for people who want to learn how to dance salsa, bachata, or other Latin dances. You could offer group or private lessons. The next one says software engineering boot camps for women. Great niche for women who want to learn how to code. Virtual event planning for small businesses. Great niche for small businesses that don't have time or resources. YouTube channel for people who want to learn how to create YouTube videos. Great niche for people who want to start their own YouTube channel but don't know where to start. You could offer tutorials on everything from filming and editing. And the next is yoga and meditation retreats, Latin dance festival, engineering conferences, event management workshops, and YouTube production courses. All right, so these are good, but I didn't really specify that I want to make my niche on an online business. So now I'm going to try to tell Bard that I want to make a website and sell products online. 
which of these are good for an online business all right now among those 10 it told me that the online yoga classes the latin dance lessons for beginners software engineering boot camps virtual event planning and the youtube these are the ones which are good for an online business and it also gives me some additional tips for starting an online business such as do your research and choose a niche and this is the step i'm doing right now this entire video about next would be to create a website and then marketing and then provide excellent customer service all right, among these five, I'm actually going to go for this one, which says software engineering boot camps for women. It's because I have some personal experience running boot camps for women and I have coached some women interns as well. So now I'm going to pick this and I'm going to find some sub niches. So I'm going to copy that. Find me 10 sub niches for this one. All right, it has given me 10 sub niches for software engineering boot camps for women. Boot camps for women with no prior coding experience, for women who want to learn a specific programming language, for women who want to work in a specific industry, who want to start their own tech company, who want to learn how to code for social good, who want to learn how to code while working full time who want to learn how to code remotely, who want to learn how to code on a budget, learn how to code with a supportive community, and learn how to code and make a difference in the world. So I really like some of these because if I were to build a website of some sort about software engineering boot camps for women, I can build three or four different kinds of courses specific to all of these sub niches. I can also write articles in all of these categories or do one-on-one -on -one sessions with women who have specific interest in a specific area of these sub niches. But these are just ways to monetize that I'm thinking about. Why not let Bard do that for me? I'm gonna say, what are some ways to monetize this niche? And just like that, Bart just gave me a bunch of ways to make money with this niche. It says charge tuition for the bootcamp. The common way to monetize a bootcamp would be to charge tuition based on length and intensity, offer scholarships and financial aid, partner with companies to offer job placement services. You can partner with companies looking to hire more women software engineers. Then it's create and sell courses online. Of course, the one which I just said, write books and blog posts. Great way to share your knowledge and expertise with others. Speak at conferences and events. This is something I've already done. Consult with businesses. Great way to use your skills and experience. This is something I've already started to do right now. Now, I really like these two answers that Bart gave me and I would like to save them. And I was just wondering if I should save them on a text file or I should save them on a Word document on my computer. But I don't need to do that because this is Google Bart and I can just save this to Docs. So that one is done. And the next one is right here. I'm gonna save this to Docs as well. And now if you go to docs.google.com, you're gonna have both those responses saved here that you can proceed working with. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of research on the first one and see if I can find a way to get keywords for that. I'm gonna say, give me 25 keywords for this sub niche all right just like that i have this sub niche boot camps for women with no prior coding experience this can be part of a main website or it can be a whole thing on its own and i have not decided that yet because i still want to do keyword research now for that sub niche it has given me a bunch of keywords most of them seem to be long tail keywords that i can work with and build a website on but I'm actually going to do a different video on keyword research on specific niches. So I'm going to stop this research right here. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some more niche research, but this time not based on what I'm interested in, but instead it's going to be what the market is interested in. Give me 10 niche ideas on trending topics right now. Now, even though this looks simple, it's actually a really powerful prompt because you will not be able to know what's trending without data. 
And since BART is a part of Google, it definitely knows what is actually trending. And even though ChatGPT or GPT-4 has plugins working in the background where it can connect to the internet, I don't think it would know what's truly trending the same way that Google would. So I'm going to go ahead with this prompt and I'm going to not add any exclusions because I really want to know what's trending. All right, so it gave me almost everything related to crypto. It says NFTs are trending, Web3 is trending, the metaverse is trending. I thought it stopped trending, but okay. Uh, cryptocurrency, blockchain, DeFi, NFT gaming, NFT art, NFT music, NFT fashion. So these are just ideas for niche topics that are trending right now. There are many other trending topics, so be sure to do your research and find a niche you're passionate about. So I am interested in Web3, but maybe not that much. So let me retry this prompt again, and this time add an exclusion. Say, give me 10 niche ideas on what's trending and avoid everything related to Web3, crypto, and blockchain. Okay, so now it says the metaverse. I'm not sure if it is considered related to these, but okay, so there's the metaverse, there's NFTs, there's AI, of course, it's trending. Machine learning is trending, data science, cybersecurity, remote work, sustainability, mental health, e-commerce. Now, I just selected 10 niche ideas which are trending. You can probably find 25 of them, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna keep it to 10. Just like the last time, I'm gonna ask it, which of these are best for an online business? Okay, it says these topics are all in demand and have the potential to generate a lot of revenue. It then says choose a niche that you are passionate about and have some expertise in. So I have some expertise in AI and machine learning and a little bit in mental health and e-commerce, but I'm actually gonna go with remote work because I have been working remotely since around 2016. Find me 10 sub-niches for remote work. Virtual assistants, freelance writers, graphic designers, web developers, software engineers, data scientists, marketing, accountants, customer HR. These are a few ideas for sub-niches within the remote work industry. Here are some tips for finding a sub-niche in remote work. So I'm not sure if Bard is messing up and telling me 10 areas where remote work exists. I think I wanted to know five areas where I can build a business around remote work. So this might be a small mistake. So let me try to change the prompt a little bit. Like I said, this is live testing. I have not planned this out. So I'm going to say, find me 10 sub niches to build an online business for the main niche called remote work. I'm going to press enter. Okay, I think this time it got my point. It says remote work training and coaching, remote work job boards and directories, remote work productivity tools and software, remote work community forums and social media groups, remote work news and resources, work insurance and benefits, remote work relocation and travel assistance, remote work tax preparation and accounting, legal services, remote work mental health and wellness services. These are some ideas of sub-niches within the remote work industry. And I think this time it got it correct. These are all areas where I can build a website or sell some products or do some affiliate marketing or do some one-on-one -on -one consulting. And just like the last one, I'm gonna export this to docs as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one called remote work relocation and travel assistance. And I'm gonna say, give me 25 keywords for this sub niche. Okay, so it gave me a bunch of keywords, remote work relocation assistance, moving expenses, housing assistance, travel reimbursement, travel insurance, travel planning, moving budget, travel hacks, travel deeds, moving resources, travel resources, relocation resources. So overall, of course, there's some overlaps in these keywords, as you see, but overall, I think I'm heading in the right direction. And that's the point of BARD. The goal is to do your research for you. And like you just saw, sometimes you do have to adjust your prompt to make sure BARD is understanding what you need. Now for the same topic, I'm gonna do one more question. I'm gonna say, what are some ways to monetize the sub niche remote work relocation and travel assistance okay it gave me an extensive list here charge for relocation and travel services you can offer a variety of services such as helping people find an affordable housing in their new city this is getting too real 
because a lot of cities are now struggling to make space for all the digital nomads who are working remotely. The next one is helping people find and book flights and hotels because some people like me are actually pretty good at travel hacking. So I will definitely be able to help out people with finding the right flights, help people find and join local communities, create and sell relocation and travel guides, partner with companies that offer relocation and travel services, and then you can earn a commission on any sales that you generate. Create and sell online courses for remote work relocation and travels. Here you can cover topics like how to find a remote job, how to negotiate a remote work contract, how to set up a home office, how to stay productive, publish articles on remote work relocation and travel, create and sell digital products such as ebooks, audiobooks, and printables, speak at events on remote work relocation and travel, consult with companies on remote work relocation and travel. So this is a pretty extensive list and and remember that I'm telling Bard how to monetize this sub niche. So it's telling you all the ways you can make a full time living just from this sub niche. Now I'm going to do a last prompt and this is going to be more about competition of these sub niches. So I'm going to ask Bard which of these are the most competitive. So these are the topics that it gave me in the start. The most competitive sub niches here are remote work training and job boards and insurance. These are competitive because many businesses offer these services. I think I made a small mistake here because I wanted to know which one has the most competition. So I want to avoid them. Instead, I asked it, what is the most competitive, which means which is the best one. And it actually gave me a decent answer. Now, let me change that prompt a little bit and ask which has the most competitive. Competition. All right, it gave me sub niches with the most competition. So it seems to have mixed them together and both of them seem to give the same response. I don't know if that's expected. So these prompts do need some adjusting and Bard is definitely making some mistakes here and there. But like I said, this is Bard at its very, very early stages. I'm almost certain that it's gonna improve over the next few months because Google is just starting out and they have the backing of a lot of data to improve this and make it high quality. So overall, I hope you got an idea of how to do some niche research, both based on your interests and based on the market's interests, because those sometimes are different things. Hopefully there's an overlap and you find a niche which both you like and which the market wants. And that's all I have for this video. I hope you got some value from it. And if you did enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to my newsletter and my YouTube channel and click like on this video. Till the next one, thank you so much.